Ah, wonderful. Shalom, how are you doing? Having a good time? Awesome. All right. Piss off a V crew by walking around the stage. Tick. So, um, even though I have been introduced as, in, like, you know, talking about VR, it's mostly going to be talking about 3D. But we're going to use technologies that are then compatible with WebVR. So basically, you get a little button, and if you press that button, you go into VR. Also, VR is a little hard to demo unless I have devices and you have devices. So we're just going to start with building 3D worlds. Also, the organizers are like, hey, Martin, uh, can you talk about WebGL? And I'm like, <sighs> yeah, I want to talk about VR, but OK. I mean, Diego did a great job in talking about VR, so I'll talk about uh, WebGL instead. And um, the thing is, who here has used WebGL before? Hands up. Who here enjoyed the experience? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because it's a bit scary to get started, you know? And that kind of makes it a great Halloween talk topic, I guess. And uh, when you think about it, it's a bit weird that it's, it's so scary and, and bizarre to get started with WebVR, because all you need, really, is a bunch of points. And because mathematicians are... So I learned this expression. There's an expression in Finnish. Uh, I forgot the Finnish word, but it translates to comma fucker. Um, and that's like very nitpicky people. I did not swear on stage, because it's a translation, you know? It's a technical term. Um, so they don't call the points in 3D space where two line segments meet. They don't call these points. They call them vertices or vertex if it's a singular, uh, single point. So you start with a bunch of points. OK, that's not very hard. I mean, I guess we can all kind of deal with screen coordinates. That's, that's OK. Now, OK, sure, we have a Z coordinate that goes in and out of the screen. But uh, whatever, right? It's like three numbers defining one point, and then you have a bunch of them. But now these point clouds don't really make interesting graphics. So we connect them up. And usually you choose triangles because triangles are like the brute force thing for graphics, uh, whatever shape you've got. If it doesn't look like the shape you want with triangles, just use more triangles. And at some point, it's going to look like what you want. So we only teach computers to do one thing, which is a triangle. And then we can kind of like draw all the shapes. So we kind of connect these, these vertices to faces. And then we add some materials that can be either colors, as you can see already, or we can put images on that. Um, and um, we don't call these, oh, OK, we don't call these images, because again, the comma fucker thing. Um, we call these textures, and there's different variations of textures, but you don't have to worry about that. Blah, 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 blah. So that's, that's not very complicated so far, right? We have a bunch of points, we connect them to triangles, and then we draw stuff on them, like an image, for instance. Mm, all right, that's, that's, uh, that's simple. But then you have tutorials, like beginner's tutorials, that say things like this. Dot, dot, dot. This is the transpose of the inverse of the 3 by 3 submatrix of this object's smaller view matrix. Obviously. <laughs> and uh, here we are again, Halloween land, right? So if, if this is the first experience you get, when it comes to like, oh, you want to do 3D in the, in the browser? That's cool. It's not very complicated. And after five minutes talking, you hear that sentence. You're like, oh, oh. I'm, and that's a fun thing to do in conversations. If you're ever stuck in a conversation that you don't want to be part of, you can just do the thing that you normally did in the 90s when you had like a phone. You go, oh, I'm going into a tunnel. I, I, what, ah, and then just walk away. It's hilarious. Um, I did that once and because it was a bet, and I won that bet. So yeah. I lost another one and had blue hair for half a year later. So yeah, that kind of evens it out, I guess. But blue hair is cool. Anyway, um, so yeah, let's, let's have a look at WebGL real quick uh, to wake you all up. You know, let's do something light. Let's draw a triangle, one triangle, nothing complicated. So we start off by setting up the context for WebGL on a canvas, all right? We set the dimensions of the canvas as a viewport. We set a clear color of black. Uh, and we say, please um, black out the entire color buffer. Um, then we put some points there. So that's very obviously a triangle. Uh, <laughs> and uh, then we create a buffer, which is a continuous block of memory on the graphics card. Uh, we put the vertex buffer in on all the content and use that for static draw. 
uh, as the array buffer. Then we create a program which is made from two shaders. Uh, I left one out for brevity, but you know, you get the point. It's like a few lines of code, really. We compile them, we link them, we attach them, we create a program from it. Very easy stuff. You do that every day. Uh, then you get the attribute location for the AV position. Uh, then you enable that vertex attribute, just you know the normal stuff. Very, very easy, very basic. Uh, you say that the attribute pointer points to the vertex pause attribute buffer, uh, has two components, x and y, it's float. It's not, I don't even know what the last three parameters mean, but whatever. <laughs> um, and then you just render them. You know, as one does. How? about not, <laughs> right? <laughs> Screw this. We'll do something fun. We'll do A-frame. Uh, because A-frame is fun and nice and friendly and great way to get started and actually also a great way to do production-ready things in both 3D and VR in the browser. And it's pretty cool because it's declarative, so you use tags and attributes, and you can use the DOM and just, you know, document dot query selector box, and then you do something with it, box dot scale, uh, or dot set attribute scale two, 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 and then it scales up the box by the factor of two. It has lots of components already. There's text, there's environments, like you can have a forest, you just go like, hey, you haven't give me a forest, an ocean, or a 3D model, or a controller, it, no matter what kind of controller you have. If you have a cardboard, it's going to be like a, a cursor in front of you where you can stare at things, and then it does something once you stare long enough onto a thing. I would love that to work in real world as well, just stare at the laundry and it does itself does not happen. <laughs> if it happens at your place, it's probably because you have a partner and they are taking care of it. Do appreciate that, you bastards. Anyway, um, <laughs> so yes, lots of components. There's like text components, all that kind of stuff. It's really cool. The community is going really strong, so there's like lots of people experimenting, and if you have a problem, you just hop into Slack or uh, a uh, uh, the A-frame Slack, the A-frame Facebook, the A-frame what have you not, um, and it'll just ask you a question, and you get a pretty quick response, stack overflow, very active as well. And it's freaking HTML and JavaScript, and that's what we love, right? All right, so blah, 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 enough, let's do things. So, so, where's my cursor? There we go. Can you all read this? If you can't read this, just, okay, someone in the back goes, yeah, so I, I don't care about the rest, just move forward, like there's lots of spaces here and there, just get going. All right, this is a very exciting website, I already love it. Um, do I actually run the server already? I don't think I do, so I should probably. Oh, luckily, there's nothing else running. My computer crashed yesterday. That's pretty good. Um, in this case, actually, that works for me. So here's the, what the flip? OK, because I mistyped. <laughs> that's an interesting fail and the demo. Like, oh, you can't even type the number right. So that's a very exciting website. That's the best website I've ever done, I think. And uh, screw that. So here we have the A scene, and we load A frame. Pretty cool. What can we do with this? Well, we can create a box and give it a color of, say, red. And then we position this, because right now it would be right there. So basically what it is, is like we are putting together a theater play. So this is our stage. This is our scene. It is empty. The camera stands somewhere and looks at the screen. Um, that's pretty much it. So you are more or less like the camera, for instance, and 0, 0, 0 is wherever you are right now, because we have moved the camera around. OK, so if I have the box, it would be right where I am, which is not very nice. So we move it two meters into the screen. Now, it's basically x is like this axis, y is this axis, and z is this axis. Negative values go into the screen, positive values go out of the screen. Uh, these units mean whatever you want them to mean. I highly recommend having them mean meters. Sorry for the imperial folks. I know you like it complicated. Um, so here we go, minus two. So that means the box is two meters into the screen. By default, it is one by one by one meter. And here we have the most boring 3D demo I've ever done. But no, 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 no sarcastic clapping. All right. But we can already move around. And uh, if I would have a VR device, there would have been a little button down here that allows me to go into VR. And then if I have like room scale VR, I can walk around it and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty, pretty nice, actually. Uh, and A-Frame does that automatically for us, because they go, does this guy have a camera? No. All right, we'll give them one standard camera. Do they have lights? No. All right, we'll give them standard lights. So it does a bunch of stuff for us automatically, which is kind of nice. And um, 
I can change the color to blue. And this was fun. I had once, I gave this talk somewhere where the co uh, projector was not actually representing colors, so we had like a little quiz game where it was just like, what happens if I type blue? And then it came out like turquoise or something. Anyway, so here this blue, that's kind of nice. Um, you might wonder, so it's, it's zero, zero, zero. It's zero on the y-axis. Why the heck is it then below the camera? And that is because A-Frame is clever enough to go, well, we are here for VR, so probably this person does not have their eyes on the floor, which most of us don't. And uh, so it automatically goes, ah, I don't know how tall or, or short you are, so I'm just going to go like 1.6 meters, which is a good approximation for a human size, I guess. And, um, and so if I move this up by 1.6 meters, 1.6, then it's right in front of us. Ta-da. But you know what? N yeah, um, <clears throat> I wanted to say it pissed me off, but I try not to swear on stage, so I'm not going to say it. Um, what annoys me is that I have to go between code and this to actually build my visual things. I would like to work a little more visual. Luckily, A-Frame has got us covered. If I type Control-Alt-I, I get this inspector. It is built in. I don't have to do anything to get that. I get that for free. And here we have this wonderful, uh, if you have ever done like any 3D editing, you might be familiar with the concept. Uh, it is less terrible than most 3D editors, so here we go. And I can do things like I can move, I can rotate. Let's rotate it around this axis. Actually, that's a terrible angle. Let's go here. So there we go. Rotate it. Uh, I can scale it as well, so I can scale it like this. And then if I go back, ta-da, here we have it, right? Uh, I can then press this little button to get the entire HTML out, or I can, where the heck, oh, the, the window is larger than, right, there we go. Uh, I can also move it around, so I can also say, like, I want this to be at minus two, and then it is as minus two, wonderful. I can copy just this box, so uh, if I go back to my code and I press uh, paste, oops, uh, paste, then I have my box here. Now, maybe I'm not very happy with the fact that it's blue, so I just go through all the components. And this is how A-Frame works. You have an entity. An entity is basically just an, an abstract object. It doesn't have any properties. And then you attach components to it. So the fact that this is a box is because there's a geometry component that says, I'm a box. And uh, the fact that it's blue means there's a material component that says, I'm blue. I'm blue, da ba dee da ba die Anyway, um, 90s kid here. So. There we go. Oh, actually, yeah, that's the color. Here we go, right? Um, and I, I can copy this again, and then I get the, the box into my code, and then I can be very happy because I created a freaking box. Um, also, if I don't like it to be a box, what I could also do is I could go back here. I can reset the scale to be 1, 1, 1, because it looks a little nicer. And uh, in the geometry component, they have this primitive thing here. Where is it? There it is. Box. I don't like boxes, so how about the pile of poop of 3D? That's a Taurus knot. <laughs> if you don't see a pile of poop, let me help you. <laughs> Brown. There we go. Yeah. So I think if, if it's colored like that, you should probably see a doctor. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, you can do things like this. That's, uh, that's very nice, and that's lovely and all. And uh, you can also add new things. Hurrah! So here we have an empty uh, um, entity. It doesn't show anything except the, the placeholders for moving it around and uh, scaling it. So I'll move it here. I'll remove this bit because, you know, it disturbs me on a very fundamental... What the heck is this? <laughs> okay, whatever. Moving swiftly on. All right, uh, that was not supposed to happen. Love it. Okay, cool. So let's let's remove this because no one. Okay, really? Aha. Okay, whatever that was. Interesting. You learn something new every day, don't you? Um, there is things like this. So, if you want something more interesting than just a very basic geometry, then you might hunt the internet for 3D models that someone else created, or if you happen to be one of the unicorns that can actually deal with 3D software. Um, then uh, definitely go for that, and you might download a model in a variety of 3D formats. Think of it as image formats, basically. So you might get it in JPEG or PNG or GIF or TIFF or IF or what. No, actually, IF is, I think, is whatever. 
in one weird format, maybe WebP or something. Uh, yeah, whatever. So one of these formats is GLTF, which stands for GL Transfer Format. And I'm like, come on, it's organized, uh, optimized for the web. Call it WebGL Transfer Format, because then we can have WTF as the extension. <laughs> and uh, I'm 12, so there we go. <laughs> um, anyway, so you add this component. And uh, I'm not sure if the inspector lets me do it, so I'll do it here. So what we can do with this is we can say a entity GLTF model equals URL, and I think it's called export.gltf. I hope that it's called that. If not, then I'm like, what? Um, let's see if it loads. <laughs> yes, there we go. And then you have a 3D model. <laughs> credit where credit is due. This 3D model has not been created by me. I have a wonderful, amazing, awesome coworker uh, that you should give all your love to. She's uh, Malina Kalunda. She's uh, Anyal Dam on Twitter. You know, just follow her because she's awesome. It's Madlina backwards. So it's like Alina. No, that's the one. Her. She's awesome. Oh my God, that was inappropriate content. Oh my God, I did not. I apologize. No, 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 no. There's a code of conduct. Seriously. I apologize. I was not aware. I'm sorry. I should not improvise things. Anyway, I guess I was art. Wow. All right. I should have not done. Anyway, follow her on Twitter. Uh, she's fine. Her content is safe for work, except the title image. So, as you can see, shush. As you can, it's not that funny. Like, is, OK, I'm not the only 12-year-old in this room. That's pretty cool. Um, anyhow, so this, as you can see, this model integrates pretty well with the, uh, with the inspector. So you can just you know, do whatever you would do with any other 3D model. So I can rotate it, for instance. And I can move it around a bit, like this. Da, 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 da. I want to make the camera go on water, because then I feel like you know, a prophet. Here we go. So yeah, I can walk on water. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty fine. Uh, there's a bunch of websites that you can use to find these 3D models. Uh, this one is one of our making, as I said. Um, there's a bunch of cool components, really, uh, that I'll, I'd like to really quickly demo. So for instance, there's this one. Da, 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 da. So we are loading, and this is how you use components from other people. We are loading a, a JavaScript library. <laughs> Let's see how the Wi-Fi is doing. Um, and we can then say, hey, I want a new entity, and uh, I want this to be an ocean. And I want this to be 100, well, let's, let's go for 500 meters wide. And that's not as deep as it is, but like how deep into the screen it goes, so 500. And um, if I'm not mistaken, and this thing loads correctly, then we should have a bit of, oh, we are underwater now, that's cool. What the heck? OK, this component has a bit of an issue, I think. That's funny. It's rotated. That's funny. Why is it rotated like that? Maybe this is actually, this is the depth of, no, it's not. OK, whatever. You can get an ocean if you find a component that does not act up weirdly. I think it might be because this might have migrated to a, whatever. Um, we're not going to use this. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, we also at work, so we thought, hey, can we make this a little easier? And uh, we figured out, yes, we can make this entire prototyping workflow a lot easier. So if you use a little library called 3D.io.js or go to 3D.io and go to the, to the documents, um, we are adding something to the developer tools. And not only that, we have a bunch of interesting APIs that you can use as well. OK, good. Um, and now it's not loading the thing. That's amazing. Does it, does it cache my code or something? Oh, that's interesting. Hi, Office. How are you doing today? <laughs> that was not what I wanted at all. Where is my, did I just know that? Aha, I just made that very, very tiny. OK, that was also not the thing. I guess that's better. Um, I want to disable cache, I guess. It is already disabled. That's convenient. Then let's reload this thing because it's not showing up. Oh, that's probably also because I might have loaded the wrong version of, yeah, OK. Ah, 
I think I load the wrong version of A-Frame because I'm like, I don't trust the Wi-Fi. I have a local version of it, which is probably outdated. I don't know, because I found it on my hard drive. And I'm like, yeah, I just copy random scripts into my website. That's what I do for a living. Um, it's not quite what I do for a living. I stack overflow every now and then. Um, loading inspector, here we go. We have an additional button that says 3D.io. And what we give you is, so there's this tool. It's a free tool. It's called Google Blocks. It allows you to create VR, uh, sorry, 3D content in VR. So you can put on your VR glasses and then put things together and then build stuff with it. So for instance, uh, I can grab a house. I would, I would love this to be as easy in real life, but hey. Um, <laughs> solve the housing crisis. Check. I can get a tree. Solve the environmental crisis. Check. Would be awesome if it would be that easy, right? It's unfortunately not. And probably we should consider that next time we vote. Um, <laughs> just say. So yeah, and, and that way I can, I can create myself a, a bit of an environment. And uh, you know, the title of this talk was, what was it? Creating 3D worlds or something? So hey, here we go. We're creating 3D worlds. Um, the geometry plane, I think the plane is incorrectly rotated, and I think I have to rotate it by minus 90 or something. Oh, it doesn't have a material, so let's add a material to it. Let's give it a bit of a nice lush green color. And I'm shit at color, so this is going to be like terrible green probably, but hey, that's what we get. Um, I scale this one up by, say, 100 and 100, and uh, move it around a bit, I guess. Uh, is, does this? Yeah. Wow, that's, a, that's like... Very green, okay. Uh, Chernobyl. Um, maybe make it a little darker green like this. This would, like, might, nice, might be nicer. Et voila, this is how we create a world. That's, uh, that's not too hard. And then I can say, like, please copy the HTML for this. And then um, I don't trust this thing sometimes because it gives you a lot of JavaScript on top of it. But basically, you can copy this stuff and then take it forward. Uh, that's not the only thing that we are adding. So if, like, you find a lot of 3D models here. Let's find a horse, because that's, gonna, that's asking for trouble, really. Um, people are not very good at modeling things like horses. <laughs> yeah, they look awesome, right? Ooh, there's one with a knight. Here we go. <laughs> wow, that's a gigantic horse. Horse the size of a house. Horse, not house. Man. Maybe we scaled it down a little bit. How about, oh, now it's, it's sunken into the ground. Good night. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there's a little knight with a horse there. Actually, I'm gigantic. Look at that. Ooh, Godzilla. Uh, all right, so scaling is a bit of a problem. If you want 3D models that are to scale, then you, oh, now it doesn't do the weird shit. OK, great, that's amazing. Cost, just, you know. Be weird to begin with and then be nice again later. That's, that's how I roll as well. Um, <laughs> remove this bit. Uh, I remove this bit. And then we start from a clean slate. And uh, what you can also do is um, you can give us a floor plan. We create a 3D model. Or we have like a public scene library. So you may be possibly, oh, now we are saying the name of the model. So that kind of ruined my, my question. Do you recognize this apartment? Do you recognize? No, no one recognizes this appointment. What is this? What question is that? Who here does recognize it? You get Swiss chocolate if you yell it out loud now. You recognize it. You raised your hands. What is it? Oh, you can read. That's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I'll throw it. OK. If I hit anyone, I'm very sorry. I'm not insured at all. There we go. Actually, that was right on spot. Um, so yeah. Big Bang Theory and stuff, you know. Um, so yeah, this, this is basically how far you can go with creation. And uh, I will probably want to copy the attributes for this one and not go to the console. I can then go here and say, I don't want this to load. I want an A entity to load this thing. It has a bit of a property thing here going on. And if I reload, I should be not seeing anything because probably name not resolved. OK, that's amazing. That's great. I, think you have a white space. I have a white space at the beginning. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> OK. 
Thanks, A-Frame. Thanks, Uri. That was really good. You want some chocolate? OK. By the way, if you're lactose intolerant back there, I'm very sorry. <laughs> what? Lactose intolerance is not fun. It, you, you, whoever has laughed has never had it. Uh, and you can get it. I did not know this, but it turns out, fun fact, just you know, this is fun fact time. This is where you actually learn something. So um, it turns out that the human, the adult humans do not have the enzymes to digest milk, but we kind of have it because it's in the milk as well. So as long as we keep consuming milk, we are kind of fine. Stop consuming milk for like half a year or, or dairy products, that is, uh, for half a year or a year, and you're going to have a fun time with the next chai latte. Uh, <laughs> I learned the hard way. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, these, these 3D models are kind of fun because you can go in here and uh, you see that there's like a bit of light baked in and that's literally called, what, like this is what it's called, it's, it's called baking light. And we can change the way that light is being baked into it. So here this is without any lighting uh, at all. This looks like super dull. Um, and this is a technique that is kind of handy because on mobile you want to not do light calculations, because light calculations are expensive. Because what does that mean? So how does lighting work in 3D space? Um, take the projector. The projector projects light onto the screen. Duh. Um, if I'm a piece of paper, I know I'm not, but bear with me here. If I'm a piece of paper and I face the projector, so the angle between the light rays casted and me facing somewhere is 180 degrees, then the light fully affects me, fully lights me up. If the piece of paper turns 90 degrees, so facing that way, and the light comes from here, the angle is 90 degrees, cosine of that is zero, which means the light does not affect the surface at all, and that's pretty much how you calculate light, but you have to do that a lot of times, and depending on what kind of materials you're using, so for instance, glass, which is like something, some of it goes through, some of it is reflected, some of it is like reflected in weird ways, very expensive to calculate, so what you do instead is you do that calculation on the server once, um, so basically, you, as long as the light does not move and the objects don't move, that works perfectly fine because you can then kind of like figure out where are the shadows and then just create an image that makes things, makes parts of the scene uh, darker or lighter. This is what happens here. If we turn that off, it looks kind of bland. If we turn it back on, it looks much, much nicer, right? Um, yeah, so that's, that's the kind of stuff that we can do. We also have like a furniture library and stuff like that. And this is how you can start creating things. And you can create quite interesting experiences with this stuff. All right, I think I'm about to be out of my slot. So that was that. Thank you. What I hope to have conveyed with this is you do not have to go through these tutorials that tell you about matrices and light ray calculations and all that kind of stuff. I gave you that as a <laughs> bonus uh, because I think you have to go through pain to earn this kind of stuff, right? Anyway, um, I think this is kind of fun and what I want to see you do is I want you to try it out for yourself because we are not even fully understanding what VR as a medium can do and, and uh, I wasn't either. Um, I have a I have a relative who suffers social anxiety, and uh, he can't really, I mean, physically, he can leave the house. Sure, there's nothing preventing him from it. There's not like a brick wall in front of his door or something. But he can't do so comfortably. So what he does is he experiences the world through media, and media means right now it's like a tiny little frame into the world. So it's, my, it's the pictures I take when I go on vacations, the videos on TV, it's the, it's the things on the internet but he's always in front of it and only seeing it like a frame. And the first experience, or the, the moment I realized what VR can do to us humans, which can be a good or a bad thing, it depends a bit on how you do it, um, was when I gave him a cardboard. And for me, I had like the, the HTC and the Oculus experience, so I'm like, I'm pretty much spoiled on high-end VR, but the cardboard is the cheapest thing you can get. It's like two euros if you get it from China. Um, and it's, it's not a good experience, it's a good starter experience, but it's not like the best experience ever. Um, and it was cheap and my phone was old, but I did like these 360 degree photospheres kind of thing, so that, that takes you into the spot where the camera was and you can turn around and you can't walk around, you can't feel the wind, you can't hear the doves, um, but you stand there and you can look around, you're no longer limited to a small frame. 
and he spent, in what I would call the shittiest VR experience ever, he spent an hour in there, and he was mind blown. And um, that's why the screen turns off, because my computer went into screw you mode. OK, great. Here we are again. <laughs> Back we are. So I want you to try this out. And if you want to get going and you're not, still not exactly sure how this all fits together and works, uh, the A-Frame school is really cool. Uh, the app creator is like a little playground environment we give you. I do a video log every week. I show you how I build stuff with WebVR and A-Frame, and now I'm running out of time. Uh, the A-Frame blog has like a weekly run-up of what's going on in the community. That's pretty cool. And now I want you all to go and try it out yourself. Build things with it and show them to me. Thank you very much. <laughs>